uh, we're back again and what we're going to do is we're going to wire in the fan for our vented litter box. What I'm using here is a surface mount electrical box. What makes these different from the other electrical boxes is they don't have the pieces of metal that are designed to go in behind the drywall and they don't have the the piece that the drywall sits up against these are designed to go on concrete on wood and screw to it and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out some of this paneling and I'm going to put in a couple pieces of 2 by 4 block to bring this thing out so what I want to do is I want to bring this out to about that level so I'm going to need about two pieces of 2x4 in behind this that are going to be screwed right to the uh, the siding that's there, the wood siding. And then I'm going to try wiring this in. This is a light dimmer but it's rated for 600 watts and these things here are like probably no more than 50 watts so it shouldn't have a problem if it hums then I'll have to buy one for a fan but uh, seeing as I already had it in a box of uh, electrical stuff I figured I'd give it a try I know years ago I used these for ceiling fans and they were okay as long as you didn't have them too low if you had them too low the ceiling fan would hum this one here says it has a built-in radio TV interference filter so it has some sort of noise suppression whether that noise suppression is gonna show up uh, on this side as well uh, is yet to be seen but anyways what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut this out cut a couple pieces of 2 by 4 and we're gonna wire this in because there's nothing in behind there to screw to we got to cut that piece of paneling out so that we can get our 2x4s in there and so what I did is I just put the box on left basically you know three quarters of an inch to an inch you know whichever way you want to do it just so there's enough room because you're going to be coming it's going to be out about like that and there's going to be a connector in the side where the wires are going to go into it so just leave yourself enough room I'd say leave about an inch from the side of the uh, pipe over to where you're going to put it I'm going to go in the bottom knockout so that kind of makes it center close to center with the box that way later I'm going to frame all the way around it when I get to doing the final wall and then all it's going to have is the knob there okay so we got that cut out what we have here is our insulation and this I believe is uh, one inch compressed it's one inch fiberglass board with a foil backing on it so I'm just gonna cut that out so I'm right down to the wood siding so now I've removed the fiberglass and I'm right down to the wood siding now this is like uh, I guess three quarter inch siding what they used back in the old days it's tongue and groove yeah there. get that focus in there so it's tongue and groove siding this stuff was real thick like I say they they made this is what they used to uh, for walls instead of uh, sheathing back in the old days when they made these cabins so basically what I'm going to do I'll put one block of 2 by 4 right in here screw it in put another block of 2 by 4 and then I'll mount the box on it and that'll bring me out somewhere around there with the box so I got one block in I just put two screws in I'll put the other block you could glue it if you want just to make sure you know put a little white glue or carpenters glue or PL premium while I had it open I did put some more caulking around the inside there where the gap was I didn't feel any air coming in because I caulked it on the outside but just to be sure while it was open I put some caulking there next one I'll put a screw here and a screw there and then I'll screw my box onto that one 
it's cut to size now and uh, I'm gonna strap it I'm gonna strap it in there so it uh, can't go anywhere one thing I want to mention though is if you're going to be using an extension cord you shouldn't use these type of connectors they have a proper one that has actually two screws in it and a little cent bump in the center and those are the ones you would use for extension cord this here just happens to be all I have on hand so if you are using these make sure you don't over tighten them and I recommend wrapping the wire with electrical tape before you a few times before you stick it into the connector just in the area where it's going to be inside the connector and again if you are using these make sure you put a clip on the wall just outside of there so if anything does pull on it it won't come out and what I'm going to do is because these don't have any uh, coating on them I'm going to cut some extra coating off of this and slip that coating over it you know at least it'll protect the wires a little bit better I don't know how they get away with that I guess they figure you're going to do it inside what inside a duct plenum where there's where there's hot air coming I don't know they're designed to be hooked up to your duct work and they do have an uh, a heat control thing you can hook them up to that's an optional extra but I would think they'd at least have the kind of wire that has a coating over it so if you can safely put it into an electrical box if you choose to but anyways we'll make do with it and uh, that's uh, that so one of the things you want to do once you measure this up to go in there your extension cord in that side connector is you want to skin it back about a half an inch and slide the whole thing forward on the green wire only you don't want any cuts on the white or the black just the green ground wire and like I say you want about a half an inch gap and you still want to be if you need more at the end you can always skin it back more at the end the idea is you loosen the screw off the ground screw in the box and then this will wrap around it and then you can still connect the other ground and the ground from your switch so basically this is how it looks the wire comes in the piece you skinned goes underneath the ground screw then you tighten up the ground screw you push this through to leave a little bit a slack in there and then you tighten this just snugly you don't want it too tight but then again with your electrical tape in there you should be okay with tightening it with that type of connector next you connect your switch up you connect your greens all together and you connect with this one here it doesn't have a white so I'm assuming it doesn't matter which direction it goes Oh, it's on the hot side so what you would do is you would connect that between your two blacks you'll connect your two greens your your three greens together so what you will do is wire up the three greens your three grounds then you will wire up your two neutrals now see this is a no-no here but because it's low power I won't worry about it this is aluminum wire and the extension cords copper wire they really shouldn't be allowed to provide aluminum wiring with anything in North America I don't know how they're getting away with it but they seem to be able to do it I've had electric heat thermostats melt down because people put the wrong marrettes on them they're combining copper wire and they're combining aluminum wire and a standard marrette one of these things here is generally for copper wire now this one here this one here looks like it may not be this looks like it's stainless steel or, or uh, tungsten or something in there it's not aluminum and it's not copper so these may be okay but anyhow like I say because it's not high-powered 
I'm not going to worry about it too much, but if it was like uh, an electric baseboard heater or something where you're drawing a lot of current, you want to make sure you're not connecting copper to aluminum or you'll end up having your marettes burn up on you in a couple years. So again, we have our green, our ground from the switch, our ground from the fan, and our ground from the extension cord which also grounds to the box. You connect all three of those together under one marette. Make sure there's no bare portion showing. You may even want to wrap some electrical tape around the marettes just to make sure they don't vibrate off. And then what you do is you take one wire, one black wire from your extension cord in, connect it to one wire one black wire on the switch then connect your other black wire from the fan to the other black wire on the switch now there's no indication of what's line and load so I guess it does not matter the polarity whether it's going in or out So essentially that's it for the wiring. Now we just push the wires in and put the screws in and then the cover on. And then test it out. See if it's going to work. So basically that's how it's going to look. Now what you'll do is take this wire and put a clip around there. I like to use the, the ones with the two holes in them and bend it around and put a screw. You know, and just put it under one screw. You can either do it underneath or on top of them and you can clip the wire all the way along where it's going to go so it, that, there's no chance of it getting caught on anything and that's good if you're going to be doing a surface mount on concrete or a surface mount on a wood beam or something like that I recommend what you do is get the proper metal case switch cover for it for two reasons because these aren't allowed by code because someone could catch on there and it could snap that off. The ones for it are metal and they're round and they're designed to go right over one of these surface mount electrical boxes. But this here is going to be all enclosed. I'm going to build an enclosure all the way around and it's going to be sheeted over on the front with some paneling. So that paneling is just going to come right up into there so this will be okay so that's it I got it plugged in now it does hum near if you go too slow now there's full and that's what we had before so you can adjust actually adjust it just before that thing starts buzzing the actual switch and we'll see how that is. Worst to wor worst comes to worst, it burns out, and I have to buy one for a fan. But it's not excessively loud. And we'll see how that actually works out. Like I say, once I get used to using it, I can probably turn it up more if I need it turned up more. But right now seems to be not too bad I have it fairly low about as low as I can get it where it's not going to be buzzing all right so we're done we're cleaned up this is how it's going to stay for a while and this is it it's been on for about three hours no problems but I can feel the actual switch vibrating so it may not be a good idea to use a, a, uh, a light dimmer switch. It doesn't seem to be getting warm. But it does vibrate and it does buzz. 
so I think what I'll do is I'll pick up a fan one and pop that in there when I uh, get a chance like I say I could leave that one on because I've had these hooked up before for ceiling fans you know years ago and they worked okay but I can hear it buzzing not very loud the lower you go the higher the buzz so anyhow it does do a good job so this is the uh, vented litter box that we built there uh, last week and I haven't seen if the cats are using it with the top on and the fan going yet because I just opened this area up to them today come on see if I can get this off it's hard to get off single-handed so there's two catches so that's what she looks like on the inside I can feel just a little bit a suction there. You don't want a big heavy duty fan where you're going to suck the fur up off a cat. <laughs> and uh, that's good. It's got the, the mesh screen on there. You could use aluminum window screening if you don't have any of that mesh. That's just uh, if you got a small kitten, you don't want it climbing up in there. It'll want to investigate. And next thing you know, you you're looking for your kitten and it's crying inside the tube. You gotta take it all apart. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, it was uh, working. I don't know if the I know the little one was in here. I don't know about the big one. I don't know about mommy. Yeah, we'll see how she. Uh, adapts to it with the lid on. I know she was using using it when I had it in the bedroom without the lid on it. And we'll see how she adapts to it here. And uh, that's it. So like I say, you know, if you uh, wanted to do this design and you don't uh, have a wall to go through or a laundry room or something that you can actually hack a hole in or you might think it's too big of a job, just cut a piece of 3 8 plywood that'll uh, fit into a window opening where you're not using a window and put the uh, dryer vent in there and then attach the blower basically the same way you might need to build some wood framing around it with some 1x2's to support the motor mount this thing here the wall was thick enough that uh, it held good so I didn't have any problems I didn't have to put a bracket in but other than that it works great and uh, if you want to build a project uh, you know it's a good project to do like I said you should be able to put this thing all together you know easily in a weekend you know to do the whole thing I can do it probably in about four hours